Alright, go. Thank you very much. That's Jackson Cloud on that guitar. Oh my God. There are actually people in this room. Uh, but we're mostly making this show for you at home. But I want you to know that if you're watching this show at home, um, you can still participate. You can still clap at all the clap breaks. Um, no laughter, we prefer. But uh, clapping at the clap breaks supports our ego. So feel free to do that. And um, if you're watching this on the internet, feel free to type in your applause uh, so that we know you exist if you fucking do exist at all. Uh, before we get going, uh, I need to read some disclaimers. So hang on a minute. Thank you very much. Uh, the views and opinions expressed by Andy Epler on the program do not necessarily reflect the views uh, held by Longmont Public Media or any associated advertiser. Uh, Andy Epler is his own problem. And if you have any notes or diatribes or hate mail, or uh, uh, pictures of genitalia, please send them to bouldercountytonight at gmail.com. Wonderful. So there you go. If somebody advertises with us, and I'm like, oh, God damn it, the blah, 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 motherfuck, motherfuck, don't think that they're out there being like motherfuck, motherfuck. That's a lot of times a me thing. Um, I should address this. I, I was uh, out of town all week, last week. I was doing, um, filming, uh, trying to film an erotic film in the desert on the salt flats in Utah. And I know you're probably thinking like, oh my God, a sex injury. No, no. Um, I was, <laughs> there was a big windstorm and I injured myself trying to remove a, a tarp from a fucking, what turned out to be a 30 foot kite that we all thought we could hang out under. Not true. Um, so I jammed a knife under my knuckle. And so all week, like, people have been asking me how I hurt my hand. And I've decided to, like, start telling a different story each time. Because, like, it's not like they actually care what the story is. They're just trying to show me that they care about me and my livelihood. So they're like, uh, you know, uh, oh, no, you hurt your hand. You can't just, like, walk away after that. Everybody feels a little obligated to be like, oh, my God. Tell me a hopefully short story about how you fucking hurt your hand. That's what people actually want. Um, so I've been trying to sort of support that, and I've started making up new stories. Like I was flying a kite, and a windstorm came, and like I was then like, I went to the doctor to get it kind of checked out. They gave me like all the antibiotics, and they're like, "How did you hurt your hand?" And I said, "Well, I'm a struggling, uh, heavy faith-related person, and I've been masturbating too much, and I know the Bible says like." If your eye causes you to lust, in fact, you're supposed to gouge it out. And you can't imagine what my hand's been up to. So I stabbed it to stop it. Um, and she still gave me the antibiotics, but she seemed judgy about it. Uh, I'm not against religious people or whatever. I, I think it keeps them out of the dating pool very effectively in this way. Um, but that's how it hurt my hands. Um, I mostly was just in a group of people. There was a big storm. I felt like, you know, nobody was paying attention to me. And so I jammed a knife in my hand. I was like, oh my God, I'm hurt, I'm hurt. And then like some people were like, oh no, Andy Eckler, are you okay? As all their belongings went away into the desert. And like that made me feel better. So that's how I hurt my hand. Apparently there's some nerve injury. I'm not really sure what that means. Um, mostly I'm worried that I will no longer be a lower mid-level guitar player anymore. You know, I hope I don't lose my skill set. <laughs> uh, so this is a new show we're doing. It's called Boulder County Tonight. If you saw our credits, of course, you'd know that. Um, if you're just tuning in, maybe because you're like uh, watching this live or something, um, we did credits at the beginning of the show. But don't don't go back now. Don't go back now. Now we're doing the show. Just stick here. You're fine. There wasn't any real important information to pass along. This show is going to kind of focus on our local community um, and. Um, injuries that we get apparently and uh, I promise I'll shave before the next episode but I was too fucking you know 
recovering from problems of, of the mychemical life. Um, tonight, our guest is Mr. Greg Benton. He's from the band Native Station. If you haven't heard them, um, the way your therapist might put it is like, you are refusing to live your best life. You know, if you have a therapist, you should definitely have a therapist. I have a therapist, um, but I feel like I, I feel like I maybe bore my therapist. I'm gonna have to tell him a great story about this, but um, I feel like my, there's not like a whole lot of interesting shit that goes on dramatically in my world. So I don't really have a lot to talk about and I just feel self-conscious about it sometimes when I'm in therapy. I should not be talking about this. Um, but the other day I was like in therapy with my therapist and I was like, oh, I had this dream, da 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 da. What do you think that is? And they're like, yeah, the dream, that's really good, it's a good dream. And I like decided to tell him something more serious. I was like, and my, it just reminded me of how like my dad used to hit me so much growing up. My dad didn't hit me at all, but like I wanted the attention from the therapist. I felt like they were drifting. And so now I have to keep up this horrible lie about my dad without the therapist really zeroing too much about it because that's not really true of my life. I just wanted the attention. I could go on, I could go on, but let's not, let's not. <laughs> Plus, what if my therapist watches this? Then I'm in real trouble. Um, tonight, here on the show, uh, we've got our friend Greg Benton. Tomorrow, we'll have somebody from the Boulder Weekly. The next night, we'll have somebody in public service. Um, Allegedly, because God damn it, if I were coming on this show, I would reasonably cancel it or whatever after I saw the first one. So, like, we think we know who's going to be on the fucking show. And if not, golly, we'll get us a chicken or something like that to talk to. Um, so if you don't mind, if you're at home now, um, please do put your hands together for our very good friend, Mr. Greg Benton from Native Station. Put your hands together. Not me. I won't clap. You do. Greg, please join me in the chairs. Let's see if this camera shot's lined up for you very well. Ooh, I think it is. Oh man, I wish we could tilt that camera up a little bit. Cause like, I'm afraid, I didn't want to put it on earlier cause look what it does right now. If I fucking stand up and I went to it, it'd just be all dick all the time. <laughs> but now it's like my friend Greg, who's not a dick at all. <laughs> I thought you were gonna go the opposite way with that too. Yeah, this, this camera over here, I think, could come up. Okay, sorry about that folks. All right, Greg. All right, Andy. You and I used to do a show together podcast. Yeah. Called The Late Weekend. And that we, that we used to do that on Mondays. Yeah. That, yeah. That's true. And I would come over to your house and we would kind of just like get drunk and stoned and like bullshit for sometimes a long time. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that's basically the workflow. That's basically the workflow. Um, we could probably even scoot in. God damn it, I'm not getting my camera right. That's okay. Um, so like, this is my next show that I was doing on Mondays, and so I wanted you to be my first guest. Um, and also because like, we've talked a lot in the past about the world at large, and I wanted to talk to you specifically about something that we've talked about many times, and that's, does the government know that there are UFOs and why won't they tell us? Since we've done a podcast, they fucking told us. <laughs> That's right. I got Do you have it. thoughts on that? Um, I was, so when when it was happening, I thought I did think about all those podcasts that we did, <laughs> um, and I was I was a little shocked at how under the radar it all went. But there was a lot of crazy stuff going on around that time, and so I think this sort of has you know the timing for that lines up because usually when they want to get something under the radar, they'll wait until everything's going haywire until you know you got capital buildings being stormed and, and people marching in the streets and they're like oh by the way they're aliens and they just kind of look away and just scratch their head and hope no one ever really heard them say it uh but so that's sort of what it felt like yes and and it but it was like a massive dump of information that i could not get all the way through i looked at some of it and it's i mean they've known for quite a while apparently Yes, they've known for quite a while, and like, for some reason, they've just like pulled their pants down about it, right? And they've like kept it under lock and key for so long. I, I wonder how much that has to do with the last two heads of state being a little bit more loose of the lips, and a little Ooh. less, little less uh, constrained of their own volition. 
Uh, so maybe they they figure there's they're gonna say something or they they keep alluding to things. So it might be you know everyone sort of knew anyway. Yeah, it was kind of like the worst kept secret. <laughs> that there's you know there's all these stories and then after a while you know my mom would say where there's smoke there's fire. Yeah. So my mom used to say that shit too. Um, I wonder like. Because, like, there's been a lot of, like, civil unrest, right? Yeah. There was the like, Capitol March and whatever, and there were the, the BLM protests, of course. Mm -hmm. And that was, like, I think very worrying to the establishment. So, like, is it possible that this is more like a, God damn, these people have had a lot of time to really sit around and consider the world. We really need them, like, we need to have them have, like, an oh, squirrel kind of moment to get them off the topic. Um... I think so in some ways, but at, at the same time, I think more so they there's enough panic in the streets already. We just, or we're still going through a pandemic. You know, like you said, there's all the civil unrest, uh, the social justice protests. And with all that, I think they figured that was as good a time as any to tell people that, you know, there's other things out there. Because, I mean, at what point do people reach their panic maximum level? So, it's at that point, there's not really much higher ceiling for panic. Uh, they already took all the toilet paper, so. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I wonder, man. Because, like, it sure does seem strange that they admitted it, you know? I was in the desert in Utah. Um, the, oh, Jesus, last night. Oh, my God. It was last night. Mm -hmm. And I'm, like, on this blanket, and I'm hanging out with this person and I'm like looking at them in the face and behind me a giant light lights up in the fucking sky big noise big scary thing and she fucking goes white and I see in her eye this like green streak because we're like looking into each other's eyes and as you do in the fucking desert on a blanket and like I just saw it like in her eyes she, she was like lost all the color in her face. I, I, I assumed it was very dark. Um, and I kind of looked, looked over my shoulder, but really the whole like rim of the sky lit up, like a, almost like a greenish color. She goes, what the fuck was that? And I go, I just surprised, I didn't do that. I don't know what that was. And uh, we look it up in the news uh, later uh, today, and there's like a big green meteor or craft or something like crashed in Turkey. Really? And apparently it like zipped right over Oklahoma or over, uh, over Utah while we were out there. That's wild. It was fucking wild! <laughs> and my hand hurt, but I saw I was on all the like painkillers and other supplements. And, <laughs> and other supplements. But like of all the things that I saw, I knew that was happening. You know what I mean? Yeah. Because it was just like the strangest. And so now it's like in the papers, you know, they're like Oh, there was like a crash and suspected of being a craft or whatever in normal motherfucking newspapers. Used to be it would be like conspiracy sites. Last page. Yeah. Usually it would be like, oh, God damn it, a, a fucking weather balloon or <laughs> streaked across the sky on green fire last night. No big deal. Everyone go back to sleep. <laughs> well, well, let me ask you this. They have all these reports. They're all of vessels or of um, ships, vehicles, some, some sort of like transportation. What do you, so what do you think whatever is driving those look like? Oh my God. I think like they keep talking about like the Tic Tac right thing, right? Yeah. It probably looks like something very simple from the outside, right? Like a, like a sphere or something like that. Um, I don't think it, I don't know. They're not exactly the USS Enterprise, I don't think. You know what I mean? Yeah. So I don't, I don't think they're driving TIE fighters either, because those are fucking money too. What do you think the beings inside look like? Uh, like us from a slightly different dimension. Really? Uh-huh. I wonder... Walk right? on two feet, gest gesture with the hands. Or like they're made out of like uh, some type of alloy or some type of metal, because they're like sentient robots. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I would think sem sentient robot is your best guess for like beings that are gonna run into us. This is a pretty far long ways away from other yeah. places. But um, I don't know, what do you fucking think? I don't know, but if you say sentient robot, that means where would a sentient robot come from? Another 
schools who roll with those beings will like that game and say, hold up. Well, they're probably from the not-so-distant future or a parallel dimension. See, I think that's where it gets interesting, when you start messing with the time. Yeah. When, when space starts messing with the time. Because time is sort of a tricksy topic. You get a little farther away from gravity, it works a little differently, right? Mm -hmm. So, like, we don't really know very much, as it turns out, it seems like. And uh, I don't know if they were using like gravity waves to travel through space or something like that, or like surfers, gravity surfers. Yeah. Uh, that would make sense to me with like some type of, but they have like a reverse parachute that they're shooting light into and the light catches it and pulls them along or something. I don't fucking know, Greg. Uh, really, uh, as you know, um, I am what is commonly referred to as a benign idiot. Ha, 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 ha. Um, I don't know, like, what if they are made of, like, some type of sentient mist or something, you know? What if they're just energy? If they're just energy in general, you know? Mm -hmm. what, if the, the, what if the vessels they travel in disrupt space and time? What if the vessels they travel in disrupt space and time? You mean, like, when they show up, there's, like, like a disruption? They, they're tearing through it, so in, in some way there'd be some disruption there. Like the Mandela some time, effect. Some timeline somewhere would be affected. You know, somewhere on some other planet, someone just disappeared. They just did that show, Loki. Have you been watching that? I haven't, I haven't watched it yet. Definitely watch it. It's about timelines and stuff. That's sort of like the main gist of the, the show. And like a lot of those, the later Avenger flicks, of course, feature a lot of interdimensional time travel ideas. I wonder if that's like modern popular culture sort of trying to prepare us in a way for like these yeah, ideas, yeah. you know? They don't want our references to be back to the future anymore. Have you seen Tenet? Uh, no. for Nolan film? Uh -huh. It has to do with like timelines too. Okay. It's very, um, you, you better not watch it high. Uh, well, if you do, you gotta watch never it see that movie. <laughs> if we can't watch it high, Greg, I think well, I'm you can watch it. You just gotta dedicate yourself to watch it like four times. Oh, okay. To actually grasp the plot. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> I like. I'm like pleased that you think I would grasp the plot anyway. But yeah, we'll see. Um, yeah, I'm not sure, man. I think like I love. I love talking about aliens and shit and in uh, parallel timelines. Do you remember in Back to the Future? I know. I think a lot of people have sort of referenced this. When they went to the future, that time has come and go. It's 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 a uh, I think it was like 2017 or something like that October or whatever. That's like gone. It's in our past, and we really do seem like we went through a little bit of like a like a Biff timeline in Back to the Future Two when like Biff suddenly runs the whole town and everything's fucking goes to shit. You know? Can I make a admission? I've never seen Back to the Future. Oh Greg. Oh Greg. I mean. So quiet. Greg. Yeah, now listen, how quiet it is. <laughs> yeah, I'm, 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 I'm surprised, and um, I, that's okay. We can still be friends. Um, <laughs> we can still be friends, but it's definitely a barrier for us. Um, Back to the Future, one and two are essential watching. Three is more like, don't watch it without being stoned. Don't watch it. Is that bad? It's pretty bad. It's pretty bad. It's, it, it's disappointing for literally every character in the movie. And um, for every year. That's a that's a hard trick to pull. Yeah, everything good gets worse, and by the end of the franchise, uh, everything is actually shittier than it began. Wow. Yeah. So because cool. like uh, the movie is actually about this hip scientist named Doc Brown, who's a cool bachelor minding his business, probably doing a lot of meth. And um, and he invents a time machine and it's like in a cool car and it goes eighty eight miles an hour and it goes back in time. Very cool. But then they fuck up the timeline. As, as you do, always do. As you goddamn do. I think they stole an infinity gem or something. And um, and then the bad guy takes over, blah, blah. The second movie happens. By the end of the third movie, you would think like, oh, they probably have a better, new, and improved time machine. No, they built it into like an old-timey steam train. They went from hot rod to steam train at the end of the fucking franchise. It's the fucking worst. Quick movie review. Now, do you want to review a movie you haven't seen? Of course you do. <laughs> Fucking Back to the Future 1, 8 out of 10, beautiful. Back to the Future 2, 9 out of 10, makes it better. Back to the Future 3, fucking 0 out of 10, fuck them. Go back in the timeline and fix it. That's my personal opinion. Is there ever a trilogy where the third movie is better than the first? 
Yes. And it's called Indiana Jones. Because Another series I haven't seen. It has the opposite that like Star Wars has, where the first movie is like, good. Second movie is like, fuck yeah. Third movie is like, oh, why? Why? <laughs> Teddy bears now? Um, Indiana Jones has it like, oh my God, he's so adorable running from the big marble. And then the second one's like, why are we doing this? <laughs> and the third movie, it's like way more charming. Best movie of the franchise, the third one. Um, of course, they've recently just completely fucked that franchise. Uh, so, like, I can't comment on the other movies, but the third one is like the best one of the franchise. So, yes. Okay, I'll have to check. I'll have to check that out. You should definitely check it out because, like, there are a lot of bad movies out there, and <laughs> the first Indiana Jones is a classic. Skip the middle one; completely unimportant. They're not like really connected in any way, so it doesn't really matter. Yeah, I mean, yeah. not everyone should have camera lights and a light controller. No. Yeah, I kind of agree with you there, Greg. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> What's your band doing next? Uh, we're going up to... Oh, where, where are we going next? I think it's Fort Collins we're going to. All right. We've got a couple of shows in August. We're going all up to Cheyenne, going to Fort Collins, going to do some stuff with Coco and Max and their Drive and Jive. Oh, I think that's cool. what it's called. Drive and Jive? Drive and Jive? I think I'm saying that right. Are they like... Is it like a... It's like a drive-in theater that we're going to play a show at. It's and like, like first time at a drive-in theater in like 10 years. Everybody's going to be hotboxing in their car or whatever. I mean, that's what you do at drive-in theaters. <laughs> that's, what you, that's one of the things you do at drive-in theaters. So like, I think drive-in theaters are classically best known for like smoking out in your car and like, I don't know, young people making out. Is that yeah. about right? A little lay a picnic blanket out. Do you expect- take, your, take your hot date. And like you're aware that during your show, people are going to be having sex, and I always expect it. Yeah. Okay. Just making sure that that's cool with you. I mean, yeah. Yeah. If it wasn't, I would stop. Would have stopped playing a long time ago. <laughs> All right. Uh, what's your band's website? Uh, NativeStationMusic.com. NativeStationMusic.com. Is that wild? Like we don't have to say the www anymore. Like when did that stop? I love it when people still say the w's. Really? Yeah. I hate it. Because like it's it's really like six U's. I mean, but it's such an extraneous use of U's. It's it seems like too many U's to use. But even when you're using double U's and you have to use three of them, it seems like a lot still. You yeah. know what I mean? And when people like they're like, I know it's W W like the internet's been around a minute. We know about it. You don't even they, even the computers don't require a WW. I feel bullshit. like when someone tells you their address, they're like, all right, so I live in a nice neighborhood, it's a brick house, and then they actually start talking. Like they we don't need all that information. Just tell me where I'm going. Yeah, I know you live in a house. Right, I'm trying to get there. <laughs> I got Google Maps. I need to get on my own. I think we should all start saying instead of WWW, we should be like six U dot dot com. Because it's six U's. It's just six U's? Yeah, six U. But all then that, I mean, we still have enough old people that will never find your website. Well, like, you know. said you, 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 you. And, like, I really want this to be clear. If you're one of the old people, like, Jesus, don't come to my website. I'm not, we're not looking for you there. <laughs> and um, it's really, it's, it's, we're, we're going to be friends a lot longer if you don't look at my website. <laughs> Do look at Greg's website. Yes. Native Station. Yeah. All ages. All ages. Again, my website is really nativestationmusic.com is a very safe, friendly website full of decent art, not dicks and all this kind of thing. No like weird psychedelic portraits and whatever. This is a safe website. You can tell your friends to go to this website. <laughs> Don't tell your friends if you go to my website. You should just demand your friends go to this website. Yeah, you should really demand your friends and be like, I will lose you as a friend if you refuse to go to this website. NativeStationMusic.com? NativeStationMusic.com. Seems easy. Now, let's all say it together. NativeStationMusic.com. Now, see, you didn't fucking even say it. Like, you're not very good audience member if you didn't fucking say it. Whatever, whatever. Take a shot afterwards. And take a shot if you didn't say it. We should have drinking games for this show. I think so. What if I just had a bottle at the show, and we don't tell the audience what the rules to the drinking game is, but we do a drinking game. And then they just have to figure out what the rules were about yeah. Why did he drink just then? When they were like, the light rail. Oh. <laughs> they drink every time they made a Harry Potter reference. All right, last question, Greg. Harry Potter reference. Um, 
if you're in one of the houses at Harry Potter school, what the fuck house are you in? What's the one that Harry's in again? Like Gryffindor? Gryffindor. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'm probably that one. Really? Because you're so heroic and brave and shit. Yeah, it, just, it just seems like a natural fit. It does, doesn't yeah. it? I think I'm a Hufflepuff. And they didn't have any black people, so. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> they could use uh, some little... diversity. Yeah. <laughs> now, you think, there's a good question, Greg. Since the hat does all the sorting, you think that hat's a little racist? I mean, maybe. It's an old hat. Yeah. It's an old hat. You know how old folks can be. Don't come to my website, old motherfucker. You ain't welcome. Especially if you're a racist hat. Yeah, it could have just dyed itself and made white. The hat is like all dingy and dark because of its fucking racist ass soul. (laughs) <laughs> and then you like go and you put on the hat and it's like what is this like a nice thick braid let's uh, Ravenclaw with you <laughs> <laughs> yeah I can see that <laughs> and then all the Gryffindor kids like oh this is like some straight wavy something oh yeah let's put you in Gryffindor <laughs> but I will say like Gryffindor seems to constantly be in trouble and in constant danger so fuck that I mean, <laughs> Hufflepuff, you never get any characters that are like, oh my god, let me pull my fucking sword out and get in a fight with a dragon. Yeah. It's always like, put us by the kitchen, you know? <laughs> What's your color? Yellow, and we don't like to fight. <laughs> you know what I mean? I think if they put a hat on you and it's like, Jesus, this, ha- this hair smells like weed. Hufflepuff. <laughs> we might end up in Hufflepuff together. If yeah, that's the I mean, if that, yeah, that's how they sort it. Racist hats. If you own a racist hat, uh, be sure to put it in your laundry with a bunch of bleach. Teach it a little lesson, uh, and then uh, and then maybe like uh, maybe throw it in a giant wait, fire. Wait, why would you take all the color out of it? To because like a lesson? it's probably covered in filth and shit from its evil soul. <laughs> but that would be like just what a racist hat wanted: just all the color to be gone. No, you can always dye it if you want to. My intention was to like hurt it and then destroy it. I don't know how else you hurt a hat except put chemicals on it. I'm not great at laundry. Don't treat it nice. Don't put any fabric softener in that shit. That's not what we're doing. <laughs> no dryer sheets. Racist hats. I didn't know we'd talk about it, but now we're all aware. A little public service announcement. A little letter from the editor. We've got a note from the editor on this? Yeah. Oh, let me help. Oh, I knew we might. Sometimes we get these little notes from, uh, from the editor of the show. Yeah, I knew it. Uh, this one is about racist hats. It says, uh, if you're the owner of a racist hat, uh, please don't donate it anywhere uh, for any uh, secondhand stores. Uh, please destroy it and or mix it in with some other non-racist hats for a better influence. But I recommend just destroying it, especially an old hat. Um, so thank you for the note from the editor. We'll try and keep those coming. Greg, thank you very much for coming on our show. Thank you for having us. What a pleasure as always. Uh, and thank you very much for watching. Uh, thanks for letting us waste about 30 minutes of your time. And uh, goddamn, we'll just see you again soon. Or we won't, who knows? Jesus Christ, we could all die.